forging cyber. Forging cyber security. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV and I'm here at Black Hat 2014 in Las Vegas. We are going to now speak with the Alien Vault crew, in case you didn't already guess. And I'm going to be talking with Jaime Blasco. He is the Director of Labs here at Alien Vault. How are you today? Good, thank you. What about you? Yes, definitely. Um, thanks for talking with us. We understand that um, you know a lot about a lot of the recent exploits and attacks that have been going on in the cybersecurity community over the last year. Um, so just give us a little briefing. What are some of your favorites or what do you find the most interesting or the most dangerous? Well, I don't have a favorite, but let's say that I mean, I, I, my, my job is basically like strike, tracking the bad guys and basically analyzing the techniques that they are using. But w what we are saying, what we are seeing is like they are exploiting more and more uh, things such as the browser. So we see a lot of exploits against Internet Explorer and, and against other browsers and also privilege escalation exploits. So once they gain access to the, to the system, they have to elevate privileges to be an administrator or to have more privileges as the regular user. And we are seeing really cool stuff going on there. Right. Um, now tell us a little bit about Heartbleed. That was obviously a major story um, last year. What's kind of like your perspective on Heartbleed? Well, I think Heartbleed was like a, a, a it, I think it, it tough as uh, several things like to the industry, because it was like a test to see how the industry could react to a, an event like that. I mean, it, in a few hours, we realized that, I mean, a big percentage of the internet was vulnerable to a specific attack. So the industry, the industry itself uh, had to collaborate with each other, and it was a, a cool thing. I mean, of course, we didn't have much sleep during those days, but it was really fun. Yeah. Do you think it could happen again, potentially? Well, I think it can happen again, and it will happen again, because, I mean, you cannot control those kind of things. And in the end, I mean, uh, every company is acting uh, by themselves, so there is no big like uh, organizations that basically group all these big companies that, that, that basically handle the internet. So I think we have to work a bit more on creating this kind of organizations where companies uh, help each other more and, threat and, and share information with, with each other. Um, what do you think are some of the kind of up and coming challenges or rising challenges in the cybersecurity community that people don't really realize? Well, I think we are starting to realize uh, of the problem of cyber espionage, and especially because we have been seeing that, I mean, even the biggest companies, we have, we have seen several breaches in the last few months where really well-prepared companies and that have spent a lot of money on, on prevention te technologies have been compromised. I can put like several examples, I'm not going to name any of them, but we, all of us know uh, what I'm talking about. So. Even those companies that have spent millions of dollars on technology are still being compromised. So we have to realize that even if you spend that amount of money and resources on prevention technologies such as antivirus, firewalls, intrusion prevention systems and so on, you still need to understand that you can be compromised. So the sooner you understand that you can be compromised, the better, because then you can start spending money in better technologies that complement those prevention technologies that, that, that you already spend money on. So I'm talking about like detection technologies, uh, network monitoring, and those kind of technologies that can alert you if, if your uh, prevention technologies are failing and, and you have been compromised somehow. What do you think is the most important thing a company can do to protect themselves that most companies don't do? I would say the first thing you should do is training your employees. It's like teaching them how to identify uh, malicious uh, suspicious things on uh, on their systems, on when they are using mail, when they are browsing the internet. I think that will be like the first pr priority for every single company in, in, in the planet. Yeah, that's true. They say that's the weakest link is, is the humans. But you guys aren't humans. You're aliens here at Alien Vault, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You're aliens and we're ninjas. So, <laughs> lots of fun stuff going on here at Black Hat. How's the show been for you so far? It's been good. I mean, I have only been here for a day now, but well, it's like always. The problem is like every year we are seeing more and more companies and more and more different technologies. And in the end, if, if I'm an end user and I come here, it's like 
I, I, I will become, become crazy because I mean every company is telling me something different there so it's kind of complicated I, I guess for, for the end user. Yeah. A lot going on. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thanks for taking the time out of your day. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you don't miss anything that we're shooting out here at Black Hat by subscribing to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, Google+, Instagram, LinkedIn. We've got it all. And make sure you don't miss our Black Hat tour video. It's a really fun one. So be sure to check it out. I'm Alicia Webb. Thanks for watching. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.